You see, unlike Fallout and Elder Scrolls fans, Halo fans aren't used to being used and abused. So the negative feedback is not only understandable, but it's actually where we need to be as a consumer base. Hello fellow travelers and welcome to the Hard Light Network. So I was traveling the multiverse when I come across this post from Rebs Gaming at Mr. Rebs on X. Quote, Pablo Schreiber, who plays Master Chief in the Halo show, explained why Master Chief doesn't always wear his helmet. You're not going to be able to bring an audience along in a long form story without having access to a character's face, which tells you what they're feeling and how they think about everything. That access to a character's emotional life over the course of time is what makes you empathize and connect with the character. I'm sorry, but it's the only choice for long form storytelling in television. What I would say to anyone who disagrees with that, I totally respect that opinion, but it's a pretty basic place to start when you're talking about making a television show of quality. He also said, one thing I learned very early on is that there's many different opinions in the Halo universe as there are Halo fans. So obviously, you're not going to be able to please everybody. But what I would like to say is that we are tailoring an experience that's tailored to the medium that it's for. Now, he also left the full link to the IGN article at the bottom, but before we read that, let's get into some of these comments. The vast majority of which are absolutely cooking Pablo for his take. Hi, I'm Wonder at Wonderstruck YouTube says, this is based on a series where the main character never showed their face since their debut over 22 years ago and for several years was the centerpiece of one of the most story-driven games around. Halo 1 to Reach have some of the most beloved campaigns to date. We love Chief because we don't see his face. We can all be the Chief, that's the point. Did nobody on the team for this show even play a single game? Hidden Xperia says, meanwhile, with an attached gif of Din Djarin from The Mandalorian, another character who's famous for keeping his helmet on. The Lunar Archivist says, if only there were movies where characters were able to make lasting impressions on audiences while wearing masks almost the entire time. And attached are images of Rorschach, V, Darth Vader, and Cronin. And a majority of the comments pretty much share the same sentiment. Now, I'm gonna give you guys my personal take on Chief removing his helmet, but first, before we do that, we're gonna read this article from IGN. The article is titled, Halo fans really want Master Chief to put his helmet back on in season two. This week, Xbox and Paramount showed off their brand new trailer for the upcoming Halo season two, which continues the story of Master Chief's live action exploits following season one's mixed reception. The trailer below shows season two going a bit more of a gritty direction with plenty of action that certainly looks improved upon season one's divisive set pieces. But it's Master Chief's helmet that has become the hottest talking point and that's because he's not wearing it. Halo stars Pablo Schreiber as Master Chief, and we see his face a fair bit in the trailer. In fact, one action sequence shows John 117 fighting the Covenant without any armor at all. All this in direct contrast with the video game franchise upon which the series is based. In the Halo games, Master Chief never takes off his helmet and almost always appears in full armor. The video games created by Bungie and now developed by Microsoft-owned 343 Industries Master Chief acts as a conduit through which the player lives out their sci-fi heroics. His visor is the one we look out from, not at. Master Chief's visor is iconic, perhaps, as the most recognizable image of the franchise. Some of the negative reaction to the Halo TV show and this latest trailer comes from this place. Fans of the video games are saying across social media and on forums that they want to see more of Master Chief doing Master Chief things with his helmet on not less. The top post on the Halo subreddit is exactly that. How did nobody at the marketing department fail to realize that this was a bad thing, it wonders, pointing out the new poster of the show that features Schreiber's Master Chief without his helmet on. Some fans have even tweaked the posters to put Master Chief's helmet back on. If this debate sounds familiar, it's because fans said similar things when Master Chief first took his helmet off in the very first episode of Season 1. In March 2022, Schreiber explained why the decision was made for the Master Chief to remove his helmet, saying, One thing I learned very early on is that there are many different opinions in the Halo universe, as there are Halo fans. So obviously, you're not going to be able to please everybody. But what I would say is that we are tailoring an entertainment experience that's tailored to the medium that it's for. When you play a first-person shooter, the way that a character is developed is very different 
different than what's necessary when you're making long-form television. To go on this journey with your protagonist, you're not going to be able to bring an audience along in long-form story without having access to a character's face, which tells you what they're feeling, how they think about everything. That access to a character's emotional life over the course of time is what makes you empathize and connect with the character. I'm sorry, but it's the only choice for long-form storytelling in television. What I would say to anybody who disagrees with that, I totally respect that opinion, but it's a pretty basic place to start when you're talking about making a television show of quality. Halo is in an interesting place, with Halo Infinite failing to hit the heights of previous games in the famed series despite recent positive sentiment from fans. The Halo community is anxiously awaiting the next entry after 343 pretty much left Infinite's story behind following its troubled launch back in 2021. Meanwhile, the Halo TV show has some work to do getting fans on side. Alright, so to give you guys my take on Pablo's sort of tone-deaf approach and response here, he makes it fairly evident from the way that he's talking that he's not a fan of the source material as is. And while the point that he made about making a TV show being different from making a first-person shooter is technically true, fans are not upset about the difference in presentation. We're upset about the difference in characterization. As many people have pointed out, there is a wealth of material for the show writers to draw from when creating new episodes. But it seems it seems like 343 is moving in the same direction as all these other massive companies when adapting these IPs. But rather than listening to these fan complaints, these big companies are spitting in the face of their already established audience in the name of marketability and expanding their consumer base. This isn't actually a new phenomenon, and it seems like most companies now just expect their audience to eat whatever slop they put in front of them and gladly ask for more. But this isn't Bethesda's annual fleecing of its consumer base. And there aren't legions of fanboys suffering from Stockholm Syndrome defending it in the comments section. You see, unlike Fallout and Elder Scrolls fans, Halo fans aren't used to being used and abused. So the negative feedback is not only understandable, but it's actually where we need to be as a consumer base. We absolutely should have higher expectations for these multi-million dollar corporations, especially when their response to criticism is really just telling everybody to suck it up. That it's hard to be creative. And how only if you, the ungrateful audience member, had only done more, like purchase more of their cheaply made merchandise, the series might not be in this situation. But enough complaining about industry standards. That's for another video. But I actually do have a little bit of pushback for the fans that are freaking out in the comments section about Master Chief taking his helmet off. It was said at the top of the IGN article and by people in other comments sections that the reason Master Chief doesn't take his helmet off is because his faceless visor is a sort of blank slate for us to project our own faces on. And I actually disagree. Master Chief does actually take his helmet off and there was a time when he never had a helmet at all. The ending sequence of Halo Combat Evolved actually shows Master Chief removing his helmet and while it doesn't show his face, the implication is that Master Chief does remove his helmet in between combat missions. and echoes. We're all that's left. We did what we had to do for Earth. An entire Covenant Armada obliterated and the Flood. We had no choice. Halo, it's finished. No, I think we're just getting started.
So for everyone referencing the game as to why Master Chief shouldn't remove his helmet, there is precedent for Master Chief removing it in game. However, the book Halo The Fall of Reach actually describes Master Chief's appearance and details his life from age 6 all the way up to the point where he joins with the crew on the Pillar of Autumn. The book states that when Dr. Catherine Halsey actually meets Chief for the first time, the boy is described as having brown hair, a freckled face, and a slight gap between his front teeth. And several years of his life and training are detailed prior to him receiving his Mjolnir power armor. However, after receiving his super soldier augmentations and his suit of armor, he almost never takes it off. However, it's not to erase his identity and make him just another faceless, nameless soldier amongst the countless ranks of UNSC soldiers, but actually to give him an identity, to make him stand out as an icon of hope for humanity. When John put on that helmet, he became the Master Chief. Noble Six from Halo Reach was an amazing example of such a blank slate, the perfect vessel for the audience to experience the reality of what it meant to be a Spartan on Reach. The lack of overt characterization opened the narrative for us to insert our own thoughts and feelings into Noble Six's personality. But the Master Chief isn't a blank slate. That helmet is Master Chief. But what do you guys think? Have they ruined Halo? Do you think Paul Schreiber is a good Master Chief? Have you ever heard of The Fall of Reach before this video? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. And until next time, love you guys. Safe travels.